Ken Gill, you are still, I'm right in saying, are you a strong communist sympathiser? Is that right? How would you describe yourself? I, would, I don't know who I'm supposed to be sympathising with, but I would claim to be a communist, yes. Yes, I would. Why still, after all those dramatic events that we've seen? Because, because I think the future belongs to uh, socialism and eventually to communism. I think that is an inevitable path of, path of history. But uh, moving from one kind of society to another is a painful and often uh, difficult path, strewn with mistakes, crimes and uh, disasters and we're do, right in the middle of a disaster at the moment but do you feel uh, you've wasted those, those years that you've devoted to the communist cause well i do, i think if you were to ask the people who followed cromwell to get rid of a despotic uh, monarchy whether they'd failed because in the end their regime collapsed and they went back to royalism and rather a reactionary english government whether the english revolution was worth it they'd say by God, it was still worth it because in the end, society changed and indeed it did. And so society will change uh, in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union's had a major problem of existing under a communist regime in which uh, people didn't behave like communists. I mean, that becomes increasingly clear. But uh, that doesn't mean to you say this invalidates the idea of the future. Though? Of course there's a future. There's certainly no future for capitalism because in, within capitalism throughout the world, after all, it's the rest of the world that runs, uh, is run by capitalism. And the main characteristics, apart from a fairly wealthy little bit in America and in Britain, is starvation, civil war, strife, oppression, racism and so on. This is a marvelous record for capitalism. So if you're saying which of the two systems have failed, I'd say both of them haven't done too well up till now, but I think that we'll do better in the long run. Ken Gill, thank you. I'd like just to uh, ask Igor again. Igor Klimanov, as the advisor to the uh, Federation of the Soviet Unions, what would you like from the British TUC? Because we're going to debate uh, the structure of the unions in the Soviet Union here in Glasgow on Thursday. Uh, I see what you mean, and I uh, remember well, as long as Mutt also. Now, we've heard from Ken Gill his very strong defense of the whole uh, principle of the mm -hmm. uh, Communist Party, of the Communist ideal. Uh, what would you particularly like um, to see a union well, leader like Ken would, Gill? I, I would support his uh, view on the future of uh, we'll, socialism. We'll, so we'll, socialism will We'll get will Ken, Gil, Ken Gill across. Yeah. Uh, Ken Gill, um, what would you think then um, of the invitation that you had there, oh. that uh, there is a willingness by the Soviet tra trade unions for help in, uh, in, in their new structures that they want to create? Well, I think that what they have to learn is genuine independence, and this is not something I've just said. I said it uh, to Igor and others on many occasions when I visited them, and uh, I'm quite convinced that uh, if they can create genuine independence, I think that that's absolutely certain to take place. Now they need some techniques because negotiating with people who only run industry for money can be very much more difficult perhaps than running than trying to discuss with people who perhaps don't have the same instinct for improving efficiency and increasing productivity. Jimmy Ailey, you've heard the point of the Soviet trade unions and you've emphasized the need for free 